abusive or addicted people usually give a little and take a lot. Welcome to the podcast where mental health is at the core of what we focus on. We strive to develop people like you to maximize who you are and what you've been called to do by sharing tools and resources for better brain health. And now here's your host, Juan Garcia. Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast, Mind Yours. We focus here on mental health and peak performance. And uh, welcome to the series. We've been uh, touching the topic, untangling relationships. And uh, in this series, we've talked about codependency in relationships, how it shows up, the different things that it does, the emotions that it brings about, We've talked about hurt and anger and how that comes about. We've talked about uh, having a distorted uh, sense of view, of responsibility, uh, lack of objectivity. And today we are going to talk about loneliness. And um, the reason why uh, we want to do this is because we, we're going to wrap up the series with this topic and we want to make sure that you understand how untangling relationships can be so twisty and so complex that even the simplest words may have a definition that we're not aware of. For example, if I say the word loneliness, uh, many people will think about whether they're single, they don't have a companion, they're not in a relationship, and they may be wondering, or you may be wondering, what does that have to do with codependency what does that have to do with any of uh untangling of any relationship and so i want to make sure that i bring a, a good definition of this and how it shows up and why there's unhealth in some of the behavior and the things that that we do because remember codependency first came about as a word that in the mental health profession we've uh, we've looked at in the 70s uh, really and it was directed towards families that were dealing with alcoholics specifically alcoholics if for example if there was a, a woman married to a man that was an alcoholic uh, and um, she just really didn't know how to deal with it or uh, did things that we would call today enabling um, the behavior of the al alcoholic, meaning something like telling their seven-year-old, it's okay, daddy's just tired, when in fact daddy is, is drunk or, or hungover and can't get up, can't go to work, and she would call in and say, um, Johnny's not feeling well, he's not, he's not able to come to work. All of those things are behaviors that talk about codependency, which is what it meant. And um, throughout the years, uh, mental health professionals have been able to uh, relate codependency, these types of behaviors, to other circumstances, such as people that are engaged in relationships with uh, drug abusers, with uh, people that manipulate, people that are controlling, also showing some behaviors that are uh, controlling in nature as far as accepting control over oneself and all of these things have now uh, come under this word codependency now we all have some codependency traits to some degree we depend on our partners we depend on certain relationships because of the value and the things that we we can glean off of but codependency under the psychological observation is for the most part unhealthy because it's directly talking about how we only come to a determination in our lives of worth and value based on depending on the things that we're either receiving or we're not receiving the things that we are, are emotionally ex experiencing because of a relationship we're in a job that we do uh, the things that we hear uh, said to us and about us and our value and our worth is not connected to any of these things our value and our worth 
is connected to the fact that we were created in the image of God. And that is what gives us the value that we have. Because we have a God that designed us, we have a God that created us intentionally. We have a God that has a plan and a purpose for our lives. That alone, and only that, is what gives us our worth, our value, and that is what gives us the motivation to do things in love so that we honor God and we also live out our purpose. Someone once says that there are two important dates in our lives, the day we are born and the day we find out why. And that is how we live out our purpose when we discover why we were created and what is God's purpose in our lives. And in the process, because of life, because of things that happen, some of it uh, beyond our control, and some are as, as a result or consequence of decisions that we've made, we develop these needs, and these needs are connected to our self-worth and value, and a lot of times codependency is developed so that we can, uh, we can deal with life, and we can what's called, you know, uh, deal or, or um, at least have some type of connection to uh, some, some value because we kind of veer off of our true value and our true worth, which, as I said, is connected to our creator, God himself. So the people that take advantage, if you will, of our lack of sense of worth or our lack of uh, self-value, they're considered the abusers or abusive or the, the addicted. Uh, they may be addicted to some uh, substance. They may be addicted to work. They may be addicted to control. Uh, whatever the case would be, those individuals are the ones that highlight directly and sometimes indirectly our behavior that is constituted as codependency. Meaning, if someone is um, if I'm in relationship with someone that is constantly uh, gaslighting or constantly uh, accusing me of things that I know are not true, but in order for me not to get them upset, in order for me to say, well, I just don't want to fight, I just don't want to make a big deal about it, those things that I do are codependent related. Meaning I depend on peace. I depend on this person not being upset and not making a bigger deal so that I'm okay instead of addressing the issue which is this person is treating me badly. And when we don't do that, when we don't have the assertive uh, behavior or attitude about standing up for ourselves and speaking truth in love, we're codependent. We, we, we want to, no, 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 it's okay. We want to dismiss their behavior. We want to minimize uh, the effect that it's having on us. And that's codependency. Now, if you want more information about that, we've done videos uh, specifically on codependency. So I would recommend that you look at those. But I just want to make sure that as we cr close up this series, that you're aware of what codependency is and why in this uh, series, Untangling Relationships, we're bringing it up because that's what causes the tangling. That's what causes the issues that we see in a lot of relationships that we develop. Now, abusive or addicted people usually give a little and take a lot. These are the people that demand, 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 but don't, don't give. Don't, they, they're self-centered, they only focus on themselves, and that's a defense mechanism. They, they don't realize that they're doing this uh, to hurt others, especially if others are not speaking up, are not putting up boundaries, and are not kind of saying, wait a minute, um, where, where's, the, where's the boundary here? Where's the balance? So you have to look out for those things as indication whether or not there's abuse. Now, I know that's another word that needs a definition because culture uses abuse as violence or physical abuse or sexual abuse. And there's all types of abuses. We need to be aware that anything that is 
not considering who we are as a person, not considering our feelings, not considering our uh, boundaries, it's abuse. Especially if it's a relationship that is uh, uh, considered love relationship and or family. Uh, anything that violates what we would need to function and to have a, a holistic approach to life is abusive in nature. Because anybody that's in relationship has to be in consideration of each other. And uh, individuals that abuse or are addicted to things that are self-centered in nature will uh, only give a little but require, require a lot. So we, we have to have that in mind. Now, in contrast, codependents give a lot, but feel they receive very little. And this is to their own demise because uh, they don't realize that they're codependent. They, they give, 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 and they don't know how to say no. They feel bad if they say no. Well, if I say no, then who's gonna do it? If I say no, they're gonna find you know somewhere else. If I say no. When you are assertive and say, no, this is not right. No, this is not fair and have a conversation about it. You cannot be concerned with how the person responds because number one, that's not your responsibility. And number two, you have to establish a boundary. Otherwise you will be abused. You will not be considered. And as a result of all of this, the codependent develops loneliness and loneliness is one of those terms that gets uh, mis. Uh, defined as well because loneliness is not just necessarily you feeling alone or you feeling like uh, like you, you know you need companionship loneliness goes deeper it's a sense of not being able to connect with people it's the sense of not feeling worthy of being with certain people it's the sense of not having a purpose beyond what you are already expected to do as a as a as a spouse as a parent as a student, as a worker, and outside of that, you don't see yourself purposely uh, doing things or doing things meaningfully, I should say. And so that produces a, a sense of loneliness and you become resentful towards those people that you're in relationship with. Um, so so this, this is what we have to create an awareness of that codependency is a problem of perception. We think that if we tell the truth, that it will be held against us. We think that if we tell the truth, the person's not gonna speak to us, the person's gonna treat us badly, the person, what are they gonna say, what are they gonna think? Remember, you are only responsible for your ideas, your opinions, your behavior, your decisions. You are not responsible for someone else's ideas, someone else's suggestions, uh, thoughts, behaviors, words, etc. So you have to be truthful and speak that truth in love with grace and be okay with whatever the person is gonna do with that information. Otherwise, you're gonna continue to feed codependency because you're gonna perceive in your head, well, if I tell the truth, then it's gonna, it's gonna affect me, it's gonna change the dynamic of the relationship, it's gonna, well, maybe that's needed. Maybe that's exactly what is needed, that your relationship dynamic has to change because there's one that's, that's taking and then there's the other one that's only giving and that is not a balanced and a healthy relationship. That is a relationship that's tangled that needs untangling. So, I pray that this series has been helpful to you. Obviously, there's so much to talk about, but I wanna leave it there so that you can at least have the courage and the boldness to speak up in your relationship as it relates to any abuse or any uh, neglect, any uh, areas that you're not being considered and that you speak up and that you say no to codependency, that you become assertive, and that you become more aware of your self-worth and your self-value that has nothing to do with people, places, or things. Your self-worth and self-value have nothing to do with people, places, or things. Your self-worth and self-value have 
everything to do with the person of Jesus Christ because the Bible says that even before the foundations of the world, you were thought of, you were formed, and Jesus was present because he, according to Colossians, was and is in everything. He has been in existence and he was there. And so he's rooting for you even now. The Bible says that he is interceding on your behalf, on my behalf, before the Father. So we're, we're you know, we're heirs. We're joint heirs alongside of Christ. So you have worth, you have value, and it has nothing to do with people, with places, or with things. So keep that in mind. And remember, mind yours because your mental health matters. Thank you for tuning into our podcast. For more information, visit our website at juangarciaenterprises.com. Our host, Juan Garcia, is available for speaking, coaching, and one-on-one counseling. You can email us at info at juangarciaenterprises.com. Until next time, remember, we only have one mind, so mind yours.